Hello there, this is Alexander from sciencequares.net and this is my old MIDI keyboard, the Launch Key 61 Mark II by Innovation. But today it's time for a big upgrade because we have right here the brand new Launch Key Mark IV. So we're going to talk about all these features and if it's worth an upgrade. Let's go. It was an empty box. So as an Ableton Live user, my relationship with Novation goes way back to the original launchpad. And regarding MIDI controllers, I've always been like a Novation guy. When I saw the brand new Mark IV launch keys, I knew it was time for an upgrade from my trusty but beaten up Mark II launch key. And that turned out to be a much bigger upgrade than I expected. In case you're not familiar with the line, launch keys are the budget MIDI keyboard line by Innovation and they've been around for I think 10 years or more. Their premium MIDI keyboard line is the SL series but for like 80-90% of the people out there I think that the launch keys are way more than you need for a MIDI controller. My review unit was the 61 keys version but while there are a few differences between the bigger and the smaller versions of the launch key all the new and impressive features are available to all models. So in terms of choosing the right keyboard size, Novation got you covered because they have a 25, 37, 49 and 61 keys versions for the launch key. And also for the launch key mini, they have 25 and 37 keys versions. The launch key mini 25 and 37 are essentially the same keyboards as their bigger brothers with the only differences being the size, the mini keys instead of full size keys, and that they have touch strips instead of physical modulation of pitch wheels. So the three differences between the smaller versions to the 49 and 61 keys are the following. First, the bigger versions have nine sliders and nine buttons below them. The nine sliders are used to control your track's volume, and the buttons below them are used to arm tracks and also do a few other things that we're going to talk about later. The second thing that I believe it's kind of important is that the 49 and 61 versions have semi-weighted piano style keys. These new keys are a big deal and a big improvement compared to other MIDI keyboards. They might not be the best keys you've ever played in your life, but as far as budget MIDI keyboards go, they're the best I've ever tried. And the last difference is that you can have different layers like a part A and a part B with different MIDI channels. But most importantly that you can split the keyboard and have two different synths on the low notes and the higher notes. Which is kind of cool when you want to play like a bass synth on the lower octaves and like a synth pad on the higher ones. So let's do a quick overview of the unit. You have of course your semi-weighted keys on the 61 version that we have right here that have velocity sensitivity but not polyphonic aftertouch which is kind of okay regarding its price here you have your nine sliders that we talked about that are only for the 61 and 49 keys with those buttons below them here you can select a track in Ableton Live but also arm a track so right here you can see that I have this armed so here on the left you have your pitch wheel and your modulation wheel which are actual physical wheels for the launch keys and you have touch strips for the launch key mini I'm really glad they used actual wheels because I'm not a huge fan of touch strips but yeah some people love them some people hate them in the middle for the first time in a launch key you have screen 
which is kind of tiny, but it's so useful that you have it. You can see the parameters that you're tweaking. You can see the chords you play and a lot of other things and makes you take your eyes off the screen and just use the keyboard. Here you have your scale, your chord map, arpeggiator and fixed chord. We're going to talk about all those things later. And here you have 16 pads that are velocity sensitive, but also have polyphonic aftertouch. You can use them to play scenes, play tracks, record stuff, play drums, and a lot of other things that we're going to talk about later. Above you have eight continuous knobs. I'm not a huge fan of continuous knobs because I tend to map knobs for things in my DW and I want to know where I'm at just by looking at them. But yeah, some people also love them. It's, it's just a matter of taste. And lastly, you have your transport controls, play, record, stop, loop, on and off. And for Ableton Live, capture MIDI, undo and redo, quantize, and the metronome. I mean, I'm so glad they added the metronome because I'm always, you know, having this on and off. And I'm so glad you have that on a physical key. As you can already tell, you have a lot of things going on with the new launch keys for controlling your DW and your synthesizers. But I'm going to talk about the five things that I think make this keyboard the best budget MIDI keyboard out there. And probably one of the best MIDI keyboards in general without considering the price. So now let's go through all of the amazing new features that this MIDI keyboard has that I think make it stand out from the competition and make it really, really special. So the first one is scales. Having a scales functionality is not something brand new. A lot of MIDI keyboards have it, all the DAWs have it, and there are also some synthesizers that have it nowadays. But it's kind of necessary for a MIDI keyboard to have this feature, in my opinion. So setting up a scale on the Novation Launch Key Mark IV is super easy. You just press scale and you can see here that it displays the current scale that is C major, which is all the Y keys. So by using this knob right here, you can change the root note of the scale. Let's say you want to have an E major. And with this knob, you can change the scale from major to minor and I think it has 30 different scales that you can use but the really cool thing about this implementation of scales is that they added three scale modes the first one is snap to scale that means every note outside of the scale rounds to the nearest note so for example you have E major which is this one mm -hmm. every note that is outside of scale let's say this one is transferred to this key. So you can play without making any mistakes and you can use any keys you want since it's always gonna be within the scale you chose. The second one is filtered out scale, which means that every note that is not within the scale is gonna be muted. So let's take for example, E major. This is your E major. Let's say these two notes are not within E major, so they do nothing. That mode, in my opinion, is the most useful one because it allows you to actually learn how to play the scale because you're not gonna make mistakes, but you're also gonna actually find out which notes are within any given scale. And you're slowly gonna learn how to play any scale by using this feature. I think this is the most useful scale mode because it also helps, you know, someone to learn all scales. And lastly, we have easy scale where every scale is mapped to the C major. So you're gonna play only white keys. This do nothing, but in my opinion, this is the opposite of filter out scale because you 
now play the C note, but it is actually the E note. So if I take that, this is an E. And when I have the easy scale, this is the, so it's really confusing to be honest, because you're playing keys and you're hearing different notes. So if you are gonna use this scale mode, I'm sure you're never gonna learn how to play any type of scale. So yeah, not my favorite one. Second really important feature of the Novation Launch Key Mark IV is chords. And this was the main reason why I wanted to upgrade because they took chord functionality to a whole new level with the Mark IV keyboards. You have a few ways to play with chords using the Mark IV. First one is chord map, where you have for any scale you choose. Now I'm in E major. You have a set of eight chords. The thing I really, really love is that you can see which chord you're playing each time. Yeah, and also in this, you know, setup, they also added a way to play those chords by holding those keys. So here you have ARP up, ARP down, inversions, bass and chord. Yeah, I don't really think that this thing right here is so useful. I don't see myself using it that much, but yeah, it's here. So here we also have the knobs above them that do a lot of things. The first one is called Adventure. And actually changes the chord. And does this for all eight chords. Next you have Explore that makes chords more complicated. You have spread that is going from normal to widest, which spreads the chord on the keyboard. You have roll. A lot of ways to control your chords and take the basic eight chords and make them more interesting, I guess. Second chord feature is called fixed chord. Here you can hold this, play a chord, and now the keyboard will play the same shape for its key. This thing is used in many classic house songs, but yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that. But the thing I am a huge fan is user chord. So with this feature, you can play any chord you like and have it forever on this 16 pads. Of course, all these chords are related to any scale. And you also see the chord you're playing each time. This is really, really fun because you can play any complex chord you want and have it forever on the keyboard itself. To do that you have to just press a pad and play any chord you want. And I have it. You can delete it and do it again. And now you have it there forever. I love this thing because I have a few chords that I really like and have them saved here and also try them out with different scales is really really creative and really inspiring when you're playing and you're kind of stuck and you want to try out different chord progressions that's a really really good feature but what I wish they added is is a way to have multiple pages with saved chords because yeah 16 pads are not enough for me. I already filled them up. 
and deleted everything and and filled them again so yeah i would love to have an option to scroll through different sets third really cool feature is the new arpeggiator to enable you just press arp and now you have an arpeggio you can latch your arpeggiator by using shift and pressing an arp again and here you have all the controls of the arpeggiator you have your tempo your swing the rate you have the gate length your type the octaves and lastly you have mutate that changes the notes and the rhythm that changes the rhythm but there is also another way to change the rhythm and do a few more stuff you can use shift and our pattern and now you have an eight step sequencer where you can remove steps from the arpeggio but you can also do accents rashes and ties this is really cool you can get really really creative with the arpeggiator here it's a fully featured arpeggiator that has a lot more stuff than most arpeggiators i really like it and yeah it's really creative and really inspiring when you're working with this arpeggiator because you can do a lot of stuff with it not only brand new and kind of crazy feature they added that works for Ableton Live. I'm not sure if it's working for anything else. It's called Step Sequencer, and you can add MIDI notes from the keyboard straight into a MIDI file in Ableton Live. And I'm not talking about recording a MIDI file, it's actually adding stuff in the MIDI sequencer within Ableton Live, which is kind of crazy and really cool way to create patterns without looking at the screen to access that you have to go to daw and the second page is called sequencer so now you have your 16 step sequencer and you can just start adding notes So when you have your sequence playing, you can choose any note and change the velocity. You can change its length. And you can also do that in smaller increments. And you can also nudge it and move it. The same thing works for a drum rack. So you can, you can addition a note and add steps. And you can also do the same things.
Do the nudge is really useful when you wanna. make things, you know, more live. Yeah, that's a much more fun way to create a drum pattern than adding notes using your mouse. Really cool. And the last thing is a very general thing is the ability to control your DAW using this keyboard. It has so many things that give you hand on control to your DAW. And if you're using Ableton Live, the experience using the launch key with Ableton Live is kind of incredible. You can use it to control your session view by launching clips or you know, stopping, muting, soloing uh, tracks. You can launch scenes and you can control your levels with those sliders over here. But my favorite thing is how you can control your arrangement view. To do that, you have to press Shift and Transport. And now if you're in your arrangement view, you have a few controls over the arrangement. The first one is playback position where you can move the marker when you press play and it works also while you're playing a song. The second one is the horizontal zoom. I just love this thing. I mean, I cannot tell you how many times I'm zooming in and out with uh, the magnifier, but now, yeah, I can do that only with a knob. The third knob is a vertical zoom, which is also really helpful. I usually have a lot of tracks and I prefer to have them like yeah, really small to see more of them. So yeah, having that is also really nice. You have your loop start and end points and also marker select, which is something that I not really using that much, but now that I have it on a knob, I might use it more. That means that you can set different markers in your arrangement view and can move around those markers. So let's say I have an intro right here and I'm playing the intro. No, that's a loop band. <laughs> I can just move to the verse and to the chorus. Yeah. Also, the addition of the screen opens up a whole new world of control, of hands-on control through the keyboard itself. Now you can see a lot of stuff on the screen. And for example, when you're working, you can just choose a track. Let's say this one, which has the incredible Rhodes Anthology series. Let's arm that track. This is an incredible plugin, by the way, by my friends at Rhodes. But we're gonna use it more on another video. Now I can go to Sift and Plugin and have a lot of controls hands on to control the plugin. For example, you can have your tuning, you can change the timbre, you can also increase the drive. Yeah, too much. <laughs> and a lot of stuff, you know, it has banks of controls. And another thing is that you can also move around plugins that you have in the same track. So now I have, for example, the vintage verb, and I can control the mix. And also the pre delay, decay, and whatever I want for this plugin. With every plugin that I tested it, it just works seamlessly. I didn't have to do anything. I have 
all the controls of any plugin mapped here on those knobs. So to wrap things up, I'll just call it and say that the new launch case Mark IV are the best budget MIDI keyboards out there. If you're an Ableton Live user, there's no question about it. The integration is perfect. But even if you're not, all the new features are baked into the MIDI keyboard itself. So they work with any DAW. And like 90% of the stuff that you can do in Ableton Live, you can also do it in other DAWs like Logic and Cubase. The build quality is a huge step up. It looks beautiful and all the new features are carefully crafted taking care of all the details. At this price point, you're getting so much more than you'd expect. Also, another thing that I don't see a lot of people talk about is that these keyboards, this lineup is kind of ideal for a student of, or a new producer that wants to learn how to play the piano. The new screen displays the chords you play, intervals between notes, and with the new scales features, you can actually learn how to play a lot of scales. As you play and you play a chord and you see the notes you played on the screen, it helps you understand the structure of a chord. And also you can you know, play inversions of that chord, seeing the notes you have to press. So it's really, really helpful for someone that wants to learn about the basics of music theory. So if you're starting out and you have no idea about music theory, that's a great tool to get you started. If I had a tool like this, like 10, 15 years ago, when I started learning how to play the piano, I would grasp some musical concepts much faster than I did. So it's affordable. It comes with Ableton Live Lite and a few other plugins to get you started. So if you're like a new producer or someone that just wants to have fun and learn how to play the piano or keys, that's a great, great keyboard to start with. So Launch Key Mark IV is a very solid release by Innovation. It's one of the few times you're getting way more value for the money you spend on a piece of gear. It doesn't have like tens of new features, but the ones it has are so well designed, well thought, and also really, really well implemented. So it's really easy to understand how to use it and be much more creative with it. So I often do like a pros and cons list for everything I review, but in this case and at this price point, I cannot really say anything bad about the new Launch Key Mark IV. It's really a great piece of gear for the money you pay, and I think it can be competitive to any MIDI keyboard out there. So thank you so much for being here. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. You can also ask me anything you want in the comments. And I really hope to see you on the next one. Love ya.